gentlemen, welcome back to Dubious Engineering. We've got some original 1970s, 1980s Nintendo Game & Watches. I designed a cover for the Nintendo Game & Watch, just like this one here. What I didn't know is that the new Nintendo Game & Watch is exactly the same form factor and profile as the old Nintendo Game & Watch. So the cover fits the old Nintendo Game & Watch and the new Nintendo Game & Watch Happy Days. We're not here to talk about my covers. These Nintendo Game & Watches have got problems. This one's fine. This one's pretty good. But these two guys here don't work properly. It's time to take them apart and it's time to fix them. So Octopus, I found this for I think about £60 on eBay and uh, I'm just going to put some batteries in it and it came with no battery cover so I went ahead and 3D printed my own battery cover for it designed and 3D printed that and uh, they work an absolute treat look at that absolutely spot on Octopus has some issues it, it sort of I don't know if you can see that or not but it sort of works and then it doesn't let's fix it I bought Donkey Kong Jr. This also came with no battery cover. So let's just put some batteries in this and uh, we'll just pop a, a battery cover on there. And I don't know if you can see that. It does work, but the display is so faded You can't actually see what you're doing. <laughs> so let's take it apart and let's see if we can fix it. So I've got a couple of ideas that I'd like to try. And one of the ideas is to replace the polarized screen. Um, and, and that might help. But I do know that there are a couple of capacitors in here. So it's quite possible that those capacitors have given up the ghost so let's put it apart anyway. All right, let's just carefully wiggle that apart. Yeah, so one thing you need to look out for if you are going to be doing this, there's a little piezo transducer here, a little piezo speaker. So don't take the clamshell apart and pull it because you'll probably break the cables off the speaker. We've got an IC in the middle just here. Then we've got um, what looks like a crystal and two capacitors. And then down here, we've got another two capacitors. And then here we've got our battery tray, our battery compartment. So let's go ahead and get into this a little bit more and see what it looks like inside. I've removed all the screws and very carefully Let's just lift up. Okay, good. We have these rubberized, these carbon rubberized buttons. Oh my goodness, this is this is looking really mucky in here. This is going to enjoy a clean out. This is definitely going to get some cleaning action. So yeah, we've got little rubberized buttons with the carbon pads on the back of them and those little carbon pads make contact with the PCB here. And the PCB really is very simple. Yeah, that's quite interesting. So there's a little piece of paper in the back of here by the looks of things. Just very carefully. There we go. And you can see that paper, that reflective paper is, is moving backwards and forwards. When I rotate this, it changes the polarization of the uh, reflections of light through the LCD display. That's what gives you the black versus non-black. So this screen here, when we look through there, if I rotate that, everything goes black. And when I rotate it back this way, 
everything goes back to normal. So that's actually, that's looking like, that looks like everything works okay. <laughs> All right, okay. Let's get this, let's get this kit cleaned up. Ooh, little push buttons here. Let's be careful with those. Let's get all of this lot cleaned up. Let's get everything gently washed. And uh, and then I think what we'll do is we will replace these two capacitors on the PCB. So one of those capacitors is a 16 volt, 10 microfarad electrolytic. And the other one is a C33 um tantalum bead style capacitor i can now do a bit of a comparison uh you can see on the right here this other sheet that i purchased <laughs> you get that nice and close and actually it would go this way around there's a little bit of leakage on the screen there's some um, some problems with the screen whereby uh, the LCD, uh, the liquid crystal is, is bleeding. Um, but, yeah, do we want to replace that with that? Or do we want to keep it the same? We should probably try and keep it the same. And actually, if I'm honest with you, that is much, much nicer. And then this here carefully picking that up this here is the color backdrop i'll just put that against a piece of white material and you can see then hopefully that there is the color backdrop for donkey kong jr game and watch <laughs> so using my wife's toothbrush no i'm just kidding <laughs> an old toothbrush and some warm soapy water we can get rid of a lot of the muck that's in here so now you can look straight through the lcd display and you can see the microchip there and that is an asic an application specific ic for nintendo a QFP, a quad flat pack. So, uh, yeah, very interesting stuff indeed. Okay, I've given this a really a good clean up. So we'll slide that back into place. And what we'll do is we'll use a little bit of non-streak window cleaner to just clean the glass very carefully. Let's get some George Formby done. When I'm cleaning windows. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it in the reflection or not, but it's just really mucky. So, uh, and this is the this is the polarizing filter. So let's just go over that. Right, let's have a go with the uh, with this then. Let's just see if we can clean this up. Now, this is the surface that I'm a little bit nervous about. So I'm going to be very careful. And then finally, the LCD itself. Let's, uh, let's give that a gentle wipe over. Yeah, and there's, I mean, there's just muck all over this thing. It looks pretty good. There's no more dirty finger marks on that, which is great news. Okay, next part of our mission is to replace these two capacitors right here. All right, so before we unsolder these capacitors, let's just mark up. This is the minus side of that guy. So actually it would appear that this is the plus side of the tantalum capacitor. So I have gone ahead and marked that with a plus. Right, let's... Uh, Let's very carefully pop these two off the PCB. Okay. So that's our 18 volt, 10 microfarad removed. 
Oh, I can smell old PCB. <laughs> Let's see if we can open the hole here. There we go. Lovely, lovely. Right, and all we've got to do now is just keep sort of chivying this along. Yeah, and there we go. Look at that. Spot on. Right. So we've got that in the right way around. That should be us done. Remove these uh, legs. I think we're ready to reassemble and test. Okay, let's uh, unplug the soldering iron first. <laughs> I don't want to burn myself with that. So all the buttons are now dry. Everything's been cleaned up. Push buttons and push your biro into to set the time and that kind of stuff. There we go. So we'll just pop that in place. And then there's the jump button right there. Happy days. That all looks pretty good. Uh, the This goes in first. Careful not to touch either side of it. There we go. The color display is now in place. The next part of this mission is to pop the polarizing filter in place. And there we go, one polarizing filter in place. And then, <laughs> this guy. So, as I rotate that polarized filter, there is a sweet spot for maximum contrast. And weirdly, when my polarized filter is in this position, the contrast isn't so great. But when I rotate it to that position there, the contrast is much, much better. And I'm going to have to fit it in place like that. Thankfully, it still fits inside the visual area of the screen. So we'll be able to do that. And then we'll have a nice contrast ratio on Donkey Kong Jr. Almost ready to go, just popping the batteries in it. We'll have to print a nice green cover for this one. Ah, oh, yeah, that's better. I don't know if you guys can see that in the, uh, in the light there. But yeah, the contrast ratio now is far, far superior. Yeah. Oh wow, I can actually play it now. Happy days. Whoop. <laughs> oh, excellent. <laughs> I died. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Brilliant, that is so, so much better. Nothing I can do about the screen bleed here and here. But uh, but yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. That is so much better. Okay, be quiet now. All right, so I've started work on Octopus uh, Game & Watch. And that is this guy here. Just noticed that the little silver reflective screen was poking out there. Anyway, um. Yeah, this is in much, much better condition. It's clean, uh, just needs a little bit of a wipe over. I'm gonna go ahead and replace those capacitors. This guy here and this guy here, this little tantalum bead and this little electret here. Uh, so those are the capacitors that we'll be putting in place. And I've cleaned up the screen very carefully there. As you can see, I'm holding it by its edges. There's just a very tiny mark around the outside of the screen, but nothing significant. And this one is pretty much ready to go. So let's just get those capacitors replaced. <laughs> Right, and then just a little dab of solder. Tidy up those connections. Lovely job. 
and some wire cutters. Perfect. And there we have it. Two spanking new capacitors fitted. Now another thing that I noticed earlier when I was looking at this was the battery terminals. Uh, so you need to just very carefully encourage those open slightly so they make a slightly better contact. There we go. Now they should make a slightly better contact with the AG13 cells or the LR44 cells that sit in the battery housing. Right, I think this one's pretty much done. Just need to reassemble. Okay, so reassembly is quite simple. Just holding things by their corners. And that's the polarizing filter. We'll drop that in first. This is the color background mask. We'll drop that in second. And I haven't removed the LCD display from the PCB. So in theory, we should be able to just drop that back in place. And with a little bit of luck, there we go. Just a little bit of gentle wiggling and uh, a couple of little tabs there, a couple of little location pins, and that all sits down. Now, We've got four screws that are shorter than the others. And those four screws are the four screws that hold this PCB in place. And they make sure that that zebra connector firmly contacts the PCB to the LCD display. So, uh, so just make sure that you've um, got the right screws in the right place when you're doing this job. It's a little bit fiddly if you're getting old. <laughs> like me <laughs> so another thing to watch out for when you're reassembling this is the little piezo speaker wire doesn't get caught underneath the stand locator there so uh, you'll notice if it does because you won't be able to close the clamshell very well all right let's get some screws in it let's get some batteries in it and let's see how it looks so and as with all of these devices this is old plastic so don't over tighten those screws just give them a little tweak okay so we've adjusted our battery connectors as well so they should make a good contact with the batteries now we've 3d printed a replacement battery housing for it in a color that's similar and look at that there we go so hopefully you can see the octopus on the screen let's give it a go oh died immediately <laughs> Yeah, grabbing, stealing stuff, and then getting back into the boat. And you can see my my score going up here. This is absolutely spot on. Beautiful, beautiful uh, piece of kit. Right, let's give the outside screen a little bit of a clean. Uh, but other than that, this thing is magnificent. Now, another thing that this used to do, because the old capacitor in here was a bit cream crackered, is it would the display would fade when the speaker made a noise and now we've got that new capacitor in there it looks absolutely spot on so our next repair is donkey kong look at this who remembers this this is a clamshell type of uh game and watch it's a little bit dirty on the outside but the inside because it's a clamshell the inside is absolutely immaculate. So no need to play with any of this at all. That looks absolutely superb. But yeah, the outside, it's got quite a lot of grit and grime on it. Another thing that I noticed, if you can see that there, the battery compartment has, uh, has a little bit of a problem. So um, if we look at the original battery uh, cover there's uh, there's a little tab that's snapped off right here so we've got a choice try and repair this one or 3d print another one um, I'm actually because 
the original part and the colour matches so well. I'm going to try and repair this one. And I think if I just use a soldering iron and a bit of heat, I can drag some of this plastic out here and uh, then, then we can just go ahead and uh, keep the original, which would be great. Okay, let's see if we can modify this. See if we can get it, uh, get it back up to snuff. So the plan then is just to clean up the tip of the soldering iron, turn the temperature right down on the soldering iron. Whoops, that's right up. <laughs> Other way, uh, down in the opposite direction. So let's get down to about um, about 200 degrees centigrade, something like that. And I'm going to put my glasses on for this. And get rid of that there. Iron's at about 200 degrees. And this is this is our problem right here. So if you look, maybe you can see that through the magnifying glass. But if you look there, we're a little bit of plastic missing. So let's go ahead and see if we can draw out very carefully draw out a little bit of plastic yep this is feeling like it's melting and there we go let's just push out a little bit more but yeah that's uh and of course, no one will notice this from the outside. But there we go. So now, <laughs> now we've got a plastic tab on both sides. Not a very big one, but let's just wait for that to cool down. Unplug the soldering iron. And hopefully now, when we plug this, when we fit the battery uh, compartment back in place, yeah, look at that. Remember that wiggled before? That no longer wiggles. Happy days. Good. That's that bit done. That was easy, wasn't it? Right. Now what we've got to do is clean it and have some fun playing it. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is, all nicely cleaned up. Let's uh, fire this little beauty up then. <laughs> Fantastic. Working a treat. So let's play. What have we got to do? Uh, let's wait until these little barrels fall. Right, okay, start the man. Jump. <laughs> Brilliant. Come on. Jump. Oh, climb up there. Right, we can't jump where the girders are, so you have to move to the other side. There we go. Get up the ladder. Get up the ladder. Flick the switch. Oh, I got a hit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I need to remember there's two, two sides to the screen. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this very clearly because of the light in the, in the room here. I've got overhead lights that are shining off the screens. But that looks absolutely fantastic. That's an absolute beauty. It's a shame about the scratching on the surface of the unit. And it's a shame about, um, uh, uh, there's a few marks on the underside, but the underside's not too bad. But yeah, there's a bit of scratching on the top of it there. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. So there we have it. <laughs> My little collection coming along strong. As always, folks. Thanks ever so much for game and watching. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care, have a wonderful weekend, folks. Cheers and beers. Bye for now.